Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Yesudian, a consultant dermatologist based in the UK. Today I thought I would look at a condition that is very commonly seen, skin tags, and analyze its relationship with diabetes. We all know that type 2 diabetes is expanding at an epidemic rate all over the world. It's estimated that the number of people with diabetes will reach 250 to 500 million globally by 2025. Skin manifestations are seen in about 30% of those who have diabetes and some may appear before the diagnosis of diabetes is confirmed. Examination of the skin can therefore give us vital clues about coexisting diabetes. Skin tags were first described with diabetes in 1951. They are called acrocodons and appear as soft skin-colored lesions. The neck, the armpits and the areas around the eyes are most frequently involved, although other body folds can also be affected. They usually vary in size from about 2 to 6 millimeters and are skin colored, although larger and hyperpigmented lesions can also be seen. One study suggests that 70% of patients with multiple skin tags may have diabetes. How do skin tags change with age? The mean number increases with age and reaches a peak value and then it declines. This peak was between 51 and 60 years in those with diabetes and 41 to 50 years in the non-diabetic group. However, in those who are obese, the number of skin tags continues to increase with age. In most studies, the age of 50 years seems to be the turning point at which new lesions are reduced. So what are the clinical clues that skin tags in a given person is related to underlying diabetes? Those with more than 30 skin tags are at an increased risk of developing diabetes. And women with skin tags under their breasts are also more prone to developing diabetes. Studies show that skin tags may have a higher predictive value for diabetes than obesity. The presence of mixed color skin tags is another important clue. Mixed color skin tags were significantly more amongst obese compared to non-obese and in diabetics compared to non-diabetics. Within those who had mixed color skin tags with diabetes, multivariate analysis showed that only those with a higher body mass index showed a positive correlation. So those who were obese with diabetes had much higher mixed color skin tags. The dark color of the skin tags may be due to interaction of the mast cells with melanocytes, similar to what happens in post-inflammatory pigmentation. Another explanation is that skin thickening with acanthosis and papillomatosis is sufficient to make the skin tags appear dark without any pigment producing cells. The reason why skin tags occur is still not fully understood. It suggested that increased insulin levels may be responsible for fibroblast proliferation in skin tags. The higher level of insulin stimulates insulin growth factor 1, which has a tissue proliferative effect resulting in skin overgrowth. Studies have demonstrated that skin tags were more closely associated with fasting insulin than with fasting glucose. In clinical practice, individuals with skin tags are observed to have hyperinsulinemia and increased levels of glycated hemoglobin, otherwise called HbA1c. Using this information, we can conclude that there are significantly more skin tags in the diabetic population than among those with normal sugar levels. Those with skin tags also have a significantly higher body mass index. There is also a fourfold greater risk of metabolic syndrome in patients with multiple skin tags. As skin tags can be easily identified, even without full exposure of the patient's body, clinicians may have a higher index of suspicion to justify metabolic screening. Those with skin tags have also noted to have higher systolic and diastolic blood pressure than controls. Increased cholesterol levels have also been observed. So the learning points are that skin tags may represent a cutaneous sign for metabolic syndrome, pre-diabetes and diabetes. They could therefore play a role in the early diagnosis of these conditions. Changing the lifestyle of those affected may have a beneficial role, which should be emphasized by healthcare professionals. Interventions like weight reduction, smoking cessation, change in dietary habits may be helpful. In skin tags related to diabetes, control of the underlying diabetes could clear some of the smaller skin tags and they do not recur as frequently. This may be preferable compared to removal as it avoids the risk of infection. Treatment is usually not required, although SNP excision, cryotherapy, or electrodesiccation is effective if they cause discomfort or are of cosmetic concern. I hope you found this information useful. Thank you for listening and bye.